Well, hello everyone. Bill Molyneux here with Bill's History World with Goober the Traveling Bear, and we're with Mr. Nell the Historian. And Mr. Nell, where are we located? Well, we're at the Maryland Veterans Museum here in, Mar in uh, Patriots Point, Maryland. And um, we're um, open four days a week. Um, I'd like for everybody to come down here, check us out. You know, I think you'll enjoy uh, visiting here. We got a lot to, to show the general public. Okay, and I think today you're going to show me around the World War II room and the different weapons that you have here. Yeah, we're going to go briefly over the weapons that are uh, used by both the Axis and the, and the Allied forces. We're going to start with uh, the Imperial Japanese forces. Uh, to start off, we have these two Arasako Skuyuin uh, Sanjuhachi Skuyuin QJQ, which means Arasaka Type 38 and Type 99 rifles, or Soju, pronounced in Japanese. The Type 38 here above fired a 6.5 six by 50 millimeter round or 25 caliber round. It had been in service from, since the early 20s till the end of the war in 1945. Seen a lot of action during the Sino-Japanese War in the late 30s and in the undeclared war between the Soviet Union and Japan and Mongolia. And um, it was a very long rifle and uh, very sturdy, very reliable. It used a German style, well, it, was, it had a German style um, Mauser bolt action, both rifles did. Now, the Type uh, 99 had a heavier caliber, 7.7 by 58 or 303 caliber. During the Sino Japanese conflict in the 1930s, late 1930s, uh, the Japanese found out that their Type 92 heavy machine gun, calibered in 7.7, had a better um, energy transfer than the 6.5. So, basically, the 99 is an upgun version of the 38, upgun to 303. However, the 99 is a shorter rifle than the 38, and this model, though it's missing, Many of the, 30, the 99s had a folding wire uh, monopod, which is supposed to be when the soldier is firing it in a prone position, gives them a steady, um, gives, steadies the rifle firing at a prone position. It turned out to be pretty useless. And then the folding site of the, on, on, the, on the folding, um, on the folding site, the adjustable site, the 99 also had, they would put in, they put in a anti-aircraft sight. Well, that was kind of wishful thinking. It proved to be also useless. Many of the troops removed that anti-aircraft, um, the anti-aircraft sight. So here are the sidearms used by the Rikugun and the Riku Sentai. That's the Army and Special Naval Landing Force. The Type 14, Nambu, like the Type 38 also had a 20-year service from the from the 20s to the end of the war. It's been mistakenly, even up to this day, it's been called the Japanese Luger. Well, there is no commonality between the, uh, the Type 14 and the P08 Luger, none whatsoever. It fires an 8 millimeter round, which many gun experts say that's kind of anemic and underperforming. But the pistol is still a very reliable sidearm used by is usually issued to Japanese officers and NCOs. Now the other Titan uh, Nambu pistol, Skuyen um, Kyuju Yon 94, this wasn't a very aesthetic looking handgun, as you can see. In fact, it had some issues. The 94, like the 99 rifle, also was issued from 1939, came about in 1939 till the end of the war. I don't know if it was because of the problems with the materials they use or the manufacturing, but the 94 had a weak sear to it, meaning that, let's say if you're trying to eject around by grasping the slide of the 94, if you grasp it too hard, put too much pressure on one part of the slide, if there's a round in the chamber, you will set that weapon off. So, not very good for the shooter. In the latter stages of the war, 
Uh, this is another 99, also in 77 caliber. During the latter stages of the war, around 1944-45, they had these 94 rifles, 99 rifles known as the last ditch. What happened was Japan was lacking in the many materials. Um, They're cut off from their empire from the from the very deadly and effective naval blockade done by the U.S. Navy submarine services, and then you start having B-29s just carpet bombing Japanese industry. So they had these cottage industries making these what called last ditch 99s, made very substandard. They didn't even have the folding adjustable rear sight, just a simple uh, peep sight to it, and it was very inaccurate. And then the, they did in some type, this one was, um, this one here had a, a buttstock, but then most of them didn't even have a buttstock, it just had two, three nails driven into the stock. A lot of times the Dodge Ditch 99 was more dangerous to the shooter than it was to the enemy. Okay, and then this one here, it's a Japanese hand grenade. It's a ceramic grenade. Unlike some of the grenades you see Allied forces use where you pull a pin and there is a lever, safety lever to it, the Japanese grenade is a little different. You know, the, the, there's an initiator pin you pull, but then you also have there's an initiator in the bottom where you have to tap it inside of your helmet or your rifle stock to t that way to get the, the fuse lit up. The latter stages of the war, they had these ceramic grenades. They almost look like the type of grenades you see from the 1800s that grenadiers use. Again, because a lot of it was from the lack of materials. There the, um, the, was just lack of materials. The Japanese Empire was cut off from their colonies in Korea and in the Dutch East Indies. So uh, material-wise, they were lacking in many materials. So mosey on here. So basically right there, that closes out what we have uh, in the museum. Again, this is not a representation of all the Japanese weapons. But these are just what we have in the museum, the, the, the rifles, the two sidearm pistols, the type, the type, some of the Japanese grenades that the, that the naval infantry, not any of the infantry, but special naval landing force and the Japanese army used during World War II. So, well, well, thank you very much. I have to ask one question. Why did... I, I see a lot of movies where the Japanese rifle has a huge bayonet on it. What was the reason for that? Well, some of the Type 99 rifles, for example, the Type 99s, had a folding bayonet to it. And then, um, and then, and then out of it, I think it's just from tradition, because um, it was for close quarter combat. The bayonet, it's no different than Allied soldiers with bayonets also. The bayonets were used for close quarter combat when they conduct bonsai charges and things like that. All right. Well, thank you very much.